afternoon, everybody. Keto for real life people. And yeah, I did not schedule this live, but I wanted to do this live. And I have an extra set of hands. Y'all, this is my daughter, Melissa. Um, she just moved back to Texas from California. So she's going to help me out today. And uh, just started her keto journey, restart. But today I want to talk about fathead pizza dough versus miracle dough pizza dough. So I had a message come in my inbox last night on Facebook and somebody had a really struggle. They were making fathead pizza dough and it just it turned into a disaster. And this person felt terrible. And I understand why, because first of all, you know, this is dinner for her and her family. And if it doesn't turn out, well then what is your family gonna have for dinner? And not only that, then you're wasting your ingredients and you know, times are tough. We don't need to be wasting ingredients. We don't need to be worried about what we're gonna fix for dinner, especially if you're fixing keto for a family, right? So, impromptu today, I've got the ingredients out y'all to make a fathead pizza dough and a miracle dough pizza dough. Uh, they're similar. I was actually inspired by fathead pizza dough I mean, I thought that was the most genius thing on my keto journey because whoever did fathead pizza dough, uh, you know, like hats off. It was the holy grail of pizza crust, I think, until my miracle dough came along. And I will explain the differences and what I like about one and what I don't like about the other and vice versa. And then at the end game is going to be how does it taste because it's got to taste good or it's not worth it. Um, so we're going to get started. now. We don't have anything pre-cooked, and we have limited toppings. We didn't have the traditional pepperoni or chicken and Alfredo, you know, Italian -y stuff. We really didn't. But we, we like Mexican food, man. We, we you know, Taco Tuesday is, is our jam. So <laughs> we decided to just go with that. But we're going to do this t the different crust, same toppings. So that way there's no you know, well, one has Italian and one has Mexican taste or whatever, so. Um, and also, we're going to be patient because we've got to do a, like a double baking. And in between the times that I'm doing the double baking, if you all have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Um, we can talk about the difference between almond flour, miracle flour, which is lupin flour. And let's get started, y'all. Let's talk ingredients. So first up, let's do... Melissa, let's do the miracle dough. She's she's not made it, so we're gonna. I've walked her through it, but she's never made it. And you're gonna get your bowl, and she's gonna need a microwave. You're gonna need a microwave for your fat head pizza dough too. So we dump in the cheese first. So this lets you know how easy it is because she's never done it. Next, we're gonna add a half a cup of lupin flour. We've got two cups of cheese, a half a cup of lupin flour one tablespoon of psyllium husk and at this point at this point before you add your cream cheese just take your spatula just toss it I like to coat the cheese with the flour and the psyllium husk because it coats it and makes more more even texture once you just get that tossed a little bit then go ahead and add your cream cheese two tablespoons and basically that's it at this point, if you wanted to take and maybe add garlic powder, onion powder, even some taco seasoning mix, you know, something dry, some chili powder, you can flavor it. You can use your pizza, your miracle dough for pizza. You can make pizza sticks, whatever you like. So um, it doesn't have to be really like smushed in the cream cheese. You just want to kind of break it up a little bit and let that that flour coat it. She's like, air, it's getting on my nails. I can already hear her thoughts. <laughs> My daughters always wonder, how can you do that, Mom? What do you know what we're thinking at the time we're thinking it? <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, we know. All right, so that's it. Four ingredients into the microwave for one minute and 30 seconds. And while that's going, I'll start making this. That way when it comes out, we can swap it out. So the difference now is for fathead pizza dough, you do one and a half cups of cheese, so a little less on the mozzarella cheese. You do three quarters of a cup of almond flour into the bowl. Um, and then we have the wet ingredients, which are cream cheese and an egg. I would like to go ahead and take the cream cheese and put it in there. 
and give it a little stir. It's not required for fathead pizza dough, but still I find it works out good. And I just cut my cream cheese up a little bit and break it down. Sort of like when you're doing a pastry dough, you know, you cut shortening or butter into your flour. Basically, that's what you're doing with your cream cheese when you are cutting it into this drier mixture. Now, it's breaking down very easy, as you all can see. And I'm just cutting and stirring and then scraping and doing it again, popping it back down in there. Now, some fathead pizza recipes call for you to just melt this and then add this at the end. I don't like doing it that way. I like just cracking the egg in here. Thank you. And also giving it a good, good stir, y'all. Just blending it really well in here, and then I microwave it. I think it makes for a better pizza crust. I've tried it all different ways, but I found that this was the best. So you just want to make sure that it is very well mixed in so that it's not cooking by itself. And we're going to also go into the microwave for like two minutes. I'm going to leave a workspace for her so that she can get her dough ready. Let me put this in the microwave. There we go. You see what I mean about it like having a little bit of a marbling effect? A marbling effect because the cream cheese kind of swirls through it. So just kind of lift it up and then you just plop it out on your board. You can use wax paper, you can use parchment paper if you want to. But the beauty of Miracle Dough is it's not gonna stick. It doesn't handle the same way Miracle Dough does. I wanna touch it, but I'm not going to. So you just kind of wanna bring it into a little ball, round it out, and then flatten it. And I'll grab you a pizza pan. So, Right now, the oven is set at 425 degrees, y'all. It's nice and hot. The temperature is the same for both pizza cr crusts. So again, very similar. Um, you can go ahead and roll that out. It is smooth. You can roll it in there or you can roll it there. It's up to you. I like to use a heavy uh, rolling pin. Are you good at rolling? Yes, ma'am. Good job. Not um, good at baking stuff, but pizza I can do. Pizza, pizza is good. So these are much easier to handle. There's no wet hands, there's no stickiness, there's no over overdoing it. I like it. I think it's gonna turn out into a funky shape. <laughs> Pizza's pizza, man. You just, you get it wherever you want it, baby. We've just got these pans right here. It's gonna be great. You can pick that up, by the way. It's just easy to fold over, pick up, turn however you want. See, it handles nice, like a dough. That's what I like. So. I'm saying a point for uh, the Miracle Dough on handling. That I'm, I'm doing a V, you know, like fathead versus type of deal. So that it gets points for. And I have even taken um, olive oil and I think you're, let's see where you're at on your pan size with the parchment paper. You're good. <laughs> She's got it. Look, it is I can bigger. Cut it all the way around and make it perfect. You can. No, I don't want to. Okay. That's a waste of food. There we go. Let me. <laughs> here's my fat leg dough now. Okay, so for the fat head dough, again, it looks kind of crumbly. That's the way it's supposed to look. I've got my handy dandy spoon, and I'm going to do the same thing. And you can really see how the cheese is stringy in here. Like, this is a mostly, this is mostly cheese, okay? And I cannot just roll it out onto my cutting board. I do need the pan right here. And we're going to talk about all these different things. I just want to keep my thoughts in order for you guys. And you want to dump this out on your parchment paper. Get all that goodness out. Okay, I'm going to set this over here. And I've got this centered now on this pan, and this is what it looks like, y'all, okay? But you're going to need some water because you cannot work with this. Now, somebody last night, the one who messaged me, said they used oil on their hands to keep it from sticking, but it, it didn't work. 
Well, that's because it needs water. The egg and flour mixture become very sticky. So just get a little bowl of water and get your hands lightly wet. You don't want to be bringing wet and you, I'm going to pull this back just a bit. And you want to start patting and patting. And it's a little hot on the fingers, but just pull them back down with some water. And again, just keep, keep going. There is no right or wrong way, guys. This is not like, hey, I'm going to put this to shame. It's just, it's just showing you more than one way to have pizza crust. I even like cauliflower pizza crust, guys. That's when I started my keto journey, all there was was pizza crust, okay? And, or I mean, cauliflower pizza crust. Now we start talking. Uh, you can use half of that. We're going to just split our ingredients. So tell them what you're putting on there, Melissa. Um, it is the Taco Bell mild sauce. We're not using tomato sauce, although we did cut it with what? A little bit, because we only have about a half a jar of the Taco Bell jarts mild salsa taco sauce and so um we also don't want it too salsa so. yeah i didn't want it to be too salsa so we took um and filled the jar back up with just regular old tomato sauce and gave it a stir and it came out with just the right amount of tomato with a little hint of uh, tacos so it'll be good now i am still pressing this dough out y'all and i'm about at my limit with it and i have to say i'm pretty good at circles too I really am but this is at its limit so whereas the miracle dough kind of gets real big uh, this is just right it, it isn't quite as big you're not gonna get quite as much out of it all right so oh you just went ahead you didn't bake yours off <laughs> it's okay we're, we're, we'll just give it a try we'll do the exact same thing no 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 let's just do it so at this point guys when you're you're here is what you do you, you bake it you bake it until it gets a light golden on it, probably about eight minutes, and then you pull it out, then you top it, and you pop it back in. But let's do this. I mean, let's do it. Let's, let's just let's put it in with a sauce, and then we can bring it back out. We can do it. We can give it a sauce. We can give it like a, a sauce topping. Here, let me get mine in there, too. I'm going to spread mine around. We don't. I don't want these to be done too differently, because I really just want to taste how close or different they are all right in we go time all right so the time is I forgot about the 112 one. eight minutes we've got we've <laughs> got until 120 okay let me dry my hands off and while we wait for those crusts to bake we'll talk about our toppings that we're using and we'll talk about the different flowers and I'll take a minute to look at y'all's comments so I'm gonna move this, some of this stuff out of the way that we don't need we well we might need that spoon we might need that spoon right there okay yeah all right so you guys let me grab I don't have the original bag but and I, I, I keep letting this one thought go through my head and I just can't bring it forth but so let me talk to you about why I like using lupin flour versus almond flour. I'm not opposed to it, but for me personally, on my keto journey, when I would use lupin flour, or almond flour, uh, even in smaller quantities, I started noticing inflammation. Well, then I started looking up almond flour, and yes, it is keto, and I don't have a problem physically with having you know some actual whole almonds as a snack like a little handful of them or something along with something else as a snack great but I was developing recipes I was using this to make cakes and I was using you know it in the cupfuls and I started even if it was a waffle or a pancake getting inflammation and bloating going so that was just me not everybody's the same but that's what uh, kind of fired my decision to start searching for alternative flowers, and I cannot stand coconut flour. I just don't like the taste of it. Uh, I could sneak a tablespoon in here or there, but I cannot use it as my main flour. Hence, I found the lupin flour. And it comes from the lupin plant, which is a flower, you know, little cone-shaped flowers, and they're pretty and everything like that. But it also is part of the legume family. 
And you're like, well, wait a minute, Nancy, we can't have legumes, can we? We don't eat beans and we don't eat, you know, lentils and soy and all that. They're all legume. Well, the difference between this legume flour and say soy flour is that it is zero on the glycemic index. It is non-inflammatory and a quarter cup of this is like, I think it's 11 grams, 12 grams of carbohydrates, but it has 11 grams of fiber. So it's one net carb per quarter cup. That's a lot y'all. And it is zero fat. It is very high protein, very high fiber, very low on the glycemic index, and it does not raise my blood sugar spike. Um, I don't, wouldn't say either that I would eat a quarter cup. I just used a half a cup of this, and I'm gonna get between six and eight servings. So I'm not gonna get even that many carbs out of this. And I'm gonna have to talk about taste. This will do what regular wheat flour does, whereas this will burn and brown and not taste the same. And texturally, this is smooth like flour and texturally almond flour isn't. It's not to say that it's not good, but it's just something that I have, well, I've just ch chosen to like eat it in smaller quantities and you know, I blend it. I love blending the two and reducing the amount of flour I use. Like a cup of almond flour is equal to a cup of wheat flour. But a half a cup to two thirds of a cup of lupin flour is equal to uh, a whole wheat flour. You know, just like a cup of uh, whole wheat flour is only a third of a cup of coconut flour. So you have to play with it. And this is awesome for scooping it. Whatever you take out of this, like add a tablespoon or two back. And you will notice a huge difference in texture. Smooths things out. So. Also, this is my brand that I go to. There are other brands out there who do what you want to do, but I will tell you that I found Miracle Flower. It, it is by the company Wholesome Provisions. They make other um, ingredients that I love to buy. They make chocolate chips, they make sprinkles, they, you know, they have the lupin flour. And what I love about it is that I love them so much that I met the owner, and on the back it tells you it is and the ingredients, 100% non-GMO lupin flour. No blends, no mixtures. And then right below that, on the, on the label, I know you can't see it because it's a lie, but it says, for recipes, go to ketoforreallifepeople.com. Ah, yeah, okay, so that was my plug, that was it. So that is why I like this, that is why I use it, and I hope that it answered a few questions that you guys might have as far as What's the difference between the two? This one has poofas. That's the word I was, I was looking for the word, but now don't ask me for the definition. They are inflammatory, to me especially. All right, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna take a look here. Take a look. It's a baby. We still got a few minutes. It's got a couple of minutes on there. Okay, so for our Mexican pizza today, you guys, uh, we've got green onion, mushroom, just because she loves mushrooms. I don't know that it goes on this. Cilantro, chopped bacon, peppers, and for convenience sake, we have just uh, pre-cooked steak fajita mix. Oh, and we do have avocado. So we can top it with a little avocado. And then for cheese... Um, we have mozzarella and cheddar, but I think one of the good things that we're going to do too, let's find it, is cook the here cheese. It is a Mexican hard cheese. It's just like Parmesan cheese, and it's very finely grated. So it's it is it's delicious, delicious. Goat cheese. Go, it's it's like a goat cheese. It is goat cheese. It is a Mexican goat cheese. It's Mexican, y'all. Totally Mexican. I love it. So good. So good. If you cannot find this kind of cheese, y'all, you can use Parmesan cheese. This isn't quite as salty. It's kind of mild. It's mildly salty. It just has a really good texture and taste to it. So, let's check our pizzas. I think we're going to go pull them out and see where they're at. And then we're going to top them and just put them back in. Oh, let me get that. You got, a, you got one? I got one? 
All right, so there you go. It edge is lightly burned on that one. I like the edges to that. It looks beautiful. I'm going to give mine just one more minute because it was on the bottom rack. Look, look it's all getting golden. Yep, it is getting golden. Beautiful. One thing about both pizzas, so I can point this out, is when they are hot, they're a little, they're not, they're a little limp. So they're, you, you do benefit by letting them cool down a bit, like slide them off the hot pan, let them cool down for a minute, and as the uh, it cools down, the cheese ingredients in both pizza crusts will start to re-firm up. So, and I have to say, my grandkids also love both kinds of pizza. You need a spat? I, oh, I, I went a little over on my um, on your crust. Yeah, I got it attached to the plate itself. There we go. A little bit on that side. See? Come on, see? What I did? Let it drop it. Or at least on that one side. Come on, drop it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I tore your pizza. Dang it. That's all right. It's all gonna go down the same way. Yeah. Chew. Come on, Jude. So do make sure that you get your pizza crust to stay on your parchment paper because it's, it's going to stick. It will stick because it is cheese, and that is just aluminum. So. But it's good cheese, and it tastes good. It does taste good, doesn't it? All right, so. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I well, obviously, I'm hungry, people. That's why I have a piece of my uh, leftover steak. This morning, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to eat it. I was so hungry. So let me see if this is browning just a chip. I, mean, I have been up since 3 a.m. Yeah, I know. I, got, you know I, I woke up at 4. All right, so this one is a little bit pale, but it's firm. And it is 100% on there. So now I'm going to salt. I'm going to sauce mine a little. No, I'm going to sauce it on top because it has a little sauce on the bottom. I'm going to start with... Uh, the cotija and a little of this. I'm going to do a three cheese blend on mine, so y'all. I want them to be kind of, you know, Mexican cheeses. Yeah. So yeah. I'm doing about that much on mine, and I'm just going to I'm going to do, do more mozzarella than I am. Well, yeah. We so. tend to use more mozzarella in Mexican food than we do. Let me get mine on there. That's going to be so good, you guys. I'm going to yum, yum, yum. I'll go this way. The trade. So I kind of do like, just like a handful at a time. So, there we go. Yum, yum, yum. And then I'm going to give just another, I'm going to do like about that much and just give a light sprinkling of the cotilla. Yeah, and I like to lay my proteins down because I don't know they're closest to it. I want them to stick to that cheese better, and I'm just going to give a little bit of a sprinkle there of some bacon that we pre cooked up yesterday. A little meal prep going on. There we go. And then I'm going to grab some. Isn't it good? Some steak. Now it's up to you. You can leave it whole. We debated. it. She's like, Mom, do I? But now I'm looking at it. I'm like, eh, I guess I should have said yes. Yeah. I don't like, personally, I'm not a fan I want of big chunks of meat or something like that on it because I don't like chewing it and you then it's sliding it off. Hand, baby. You're just going to have to go back on it. So I'm just going to take my meat. It's only a minute. And I'm going to put it more into cubes because I don't want big chunks of steak sliding off in my, you know, face. And I'm just going to give it a few chunks. And it's up to you. I mean, what size you want. You could use chicken. You could use ground beef. You could use ground pork. You, whichever you want. And put that on there. I'm not going huge on the meat, if you notice. I mean, there's some bacon and there's some steak. But it's like, like in a regular pizza stop. It doesn't have to be loaded down. Few bites of pizza. We got protein from the cheese. We've got fat from the cheese. We've got some steak here. Um, I'm gonna do some red pepper, just a little sprinkle, just to give it a little color and flair. You could use jalapenos if you like. You know, pizza is is whatever you want it to be, right? Hello. Okay, a little green onion just to give it some color. 
and then a titch of cilantro, a sprinkle. I like to go high on the cilantro. Like that. Like that. That's what I like to do. Okay, so you're doing the mushroom thing? Yeah, I did. Okay. I I'll did do put a, a lot on there, but I did. I did a little balance of it. Already our pizzas look different and we're doing the exact same ingredients. Isn't that funny? Mine looks more like actual Mexican food than yours does. Yeah, kind of, sort of, but still they're both beautiful. Yours is a little thin, mine's a little chunky. You haven't put the meat on yours yet though. Well, I have to cut mine down too, Mother. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to get mine going seconds. in. Look, there y'all. So there it is and it's fixing to go in the oven. In the oven. I'm getting the top. I call top. I did it. I dibs it. This is a great dish, y'all, that you can make with your family too. I mean, the kids love it. So, and uh, and if you, were, she's she's going for more like the ground beef. She's, she's I don't like tiny, big chunks of meat, man. Tiny, and I'm doing chunky, chunky, chunky. All right. And then, of course, for our Mexican pizzas, we have Cholula. Anybody watch the movie Selena? Ula Salinas. She had the hot Cholula on her pizza, and I'm telling you, we've done it ever since. I usually carry a pocket Cholula she in my does. purse. I'm surprised you don't have a holster. <laughs> it was on everything, man. Oh, so I know. Well, I carry butter in my purse and salt in my purse, and I carry nut butter in my purse, so hey. I, I'm not going to judge you or anything like that, baby. And then one last round of cheese on top. Oh, you did extra cheese. Well, I did the cheese. We're good. Yeah, it kind of helps hold the top of the part for topping this down. I really appreciate that. I'm going to go look at some comments now. See if there's any questions out there. Let me wipe my fingers off real quick. Isn't though. it beautiful? It is beautiful. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I just put my thumb on my glasses. Right, on my lens. Oh, well. It is what it is. All right. Let's see, y'all. Yuck, cilantro. The pizza will taste like soap. Only for half of the people, Mary. Uh, let me tell you, cilantro is subjection. You don't have to use it. Um, some people love cilantro. Some people don't. Some people love stevia. Some people don't. Some people adore asparagus. The other half don't because we have this, this gene that d d directs whether or not we're going to like it. So, other than that, it should be good. Hey, Sharon. Uh, first time seeing this daughter. Yes. Yes, this is her first time on YouTube with me. I mean, not from 2018. But. Well, my, my people on YouTube are not all of them are Facebook, so. Um, awesome, awesome. There's one that pops in from time to time, a bit silly, a bit crazy. Oh, that would be Elizabeth. Uh, yes, I do have four daughters. Uh, I have, yeah. Who is this other person? Okay, not all lupin flowers are the same. You want a sweet lupin flower, otherwise you'll get a bitter tasting product. And I'm gonna say again, most lupin flowers are sweet. Um, and if you do not know how to use lupin flower, guys, so here, let me give you another little thing. I don't wanna be talking that way, so I'll come back around. So here's another little interesting fact about lupin flower. Lupin flower tastes yucky when it's in the raw state. It, it, it tastes raw, it tastes green, it has a slight bitterness. Uh, so if you were making a cake, for example, and you went to lick the cake batter and you were like, oh, that tastes terrible. I don't want to eat that. Uh, push through because something happens in the baking process and it smooths out. Um, another thing about lupin flour, it is a blending flour. It is, I only have a couple of things that I've 100% used lupin flour in, but it was a, a small amount, not a huge amount. So... Um, if you were to try to make, say, cookies or cake or anything only using lupin flour, I don't care if it's sweet or non-sweet, it will taste terrible on its own. Again, it is a, a, a flour that blends well and plays well with other flours. And, then, and one of the things that you should be aware of is uh, stores like Walmart uh, put lupin flour on the shelf and everybody thought, yay, hooray! But it was a blend. It was uh, lupin flour blended with rice flours, with wheat flours, with uh, non-keto. Let's put it that way. They were not keto friendly and they weren't really low carb friendly. Uh, and they sure weren't gluten free either. So uh, I prefer Miracle flour. I will share the link when I get done with this live. I've got to go back in and put the links down for it. Um, I'll put a link for the Miracle dough because that is on my website. Um, as far as I know, everybody knows how to make fathead pizza dough. It's 
it's plastered everywhere, so request it if you you don't have it and you need it, and I'll I guess I'll just add it. But <clears throat> anyway, yeah, that's the difference. Um, if you buy a, a substandard lupin flower, it might not taste as good. But there are brands out there, like at nutrition. What is it? Newnutrition.com or something like that. I haven't ordered from there, but I know people do, and they get good lupin flower. You can get it on Amazon. It's a yellow bag with a green stripe on it, I think. I buy mine. Uh, you can go to their website, or you can get it on Amazon. And I will be sharing my Amazon link. Uh, and I will uh, tell you all that I am an Amazon affiliate, so for every thing that you link through or buy, I get pennies on the dollar. It doesn't affect your price. It doesn't make the price higher or lower. It's just a link. So, um, And I think that's it. I'm going to check on these pizzas, and then I'll look to see if there's any more questions. It is coming around beautifully. I'm going to let it get a little more color. It's almost done. My toppings are melted. I just want to get them a little bit bubbly. <coughs> Got this little bit here. And then I'll come around and look. Well, let's see. I don't ever bake it off, sister. I love you both. I love you, sweet girl. Um, there we go. Lupin, lupin, lupin. What type of flower is the miracle dough? It is lupin, lupin. We all check on that, Neener. Uh, not about this, but I've searched and searched. Even recipes on website, Facebook Live, was not below when you finished. Wanted to make it in the next hour. Oops, cancel. Let's do this. I'm not sure what that referred to. Hi, hey, 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 ha, ha, hi. Ah. Okay, not about this, but I've searched and searched. Um, well, Nina, you're just gonna have to let me know what you're searching for. So, oh, this thing is, there we go. No, I don't need to do that. Oh, well, you know how YouTube is. They're a little, they're a little different, so. I am gonna take these dishes real quick, and I'm gonna get the board prepped so that we can put some pizza out there for y'all. And uh, I, I don't know, I've done pizza videos. I mean, I did fat head pizza like when I very first started my page and my, my YouTube and all that. And, um, it was a mess. I'm still a mess, but less of a mess. <laughs> I think I'm a little bit more organized now. And of course, when I came out and I developed the Miracle Dough recipe, I was excited. So what did I do? I shared like a mad woman like you could do this and you could do this and you could do this and you could do this <laughs> the owner of uh, wholesome provision actually said you know nancy i'm glad that you get so excited for all of these different things that you can do with one recipe much less than other ones that you've been working on but most people just want to know one thing at a time they don't want to be overwhelmed because they don't you know quite operate like you do one of you to start thinking of this and I was really glad that he said that to me because I just assumed. So I have started slowing myself down when it comes to things with lupin flower recipes. Um, for instance, I did a live just a couple of days ago with uh, egg rolls. Um, I did egg roll in a bowl and I made some miracle dough, the exact same recipe as this one. And I used a tortilla press and we just, I just rolled them up. I rolled the filling up and then I popped it in my air fryer. And with the same, same dough, I was able to make um, egg rolls. So if you didn't catch that video, you can um, go back into my videos and search it. I don't know how those little drop down things work for fancy links you, I'm not that good. So, um, but yeah, I'm glad I slowed down just a titch. And I'm kind of going over the different things, and you will find I'm going to have like a miracle dough theme going on as it comes to me. I just thought putting these two together and checking them out side by side was a good idea. Sounded fun to me. Let me look here, y'all. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so you can see here that my this is browning beautifully. 
And that is the fat head pizza dough. I'm going to see what the bottom looks like. Looks a little sticky. Guys, use quality. Uh, I will tell you, use some quality parchment paper. So I've been buying this parchment paper at the dollar store because it's cheaper. It's not, it, it's good for certain things, but again, it's not all that. Just saying. So, I want you guys to see this. I'm going to pull it back. I tell them, listen, like the further back it goes, the, that's hot, baby. Be careful. I push this back just a titch more. I really want you guys to get this see this pizza without having to pull the cutting board off off the, the charts here. So this is the fat hand pizza dough and it is very hot and so it is very pliable. Um, I, I took my spatula. I'll just use this one. And I'm going to let this cool for a minute. I really am because you don't want to, like I said, when it's hot, I don't care if it's fat head or if it's uh, miracle dough, it has got a cheese base in it, so you've got to give it a minute to hold its own. And I'm going to come around here and with a very quick clean up. This dough is beautifully crispy around the edges, that's what we're looking for. You can, if you want, you can um, put the broiler on and let me. Mary. So we make sure we didn't go back over there on that little cheesy part where it was stuck. There we go. And come around this way. There, there we go. And now we'll just slide it off as well. Okay. And then, now we're just going to give them a minute to chill. What did I do with the pizza cutter? You gave it to me to wash. And I hadn't even used it yet. So, now we have Cholula. You can, if you wanted to, because it's a Mexican pizza, you could take some avocado now, and you could you could top it if you wanted with little bits of avocado. Um, what are you grabbing? <laughs> the creme fraiche. <laughs> She's getting the creme fraiche, which is a Mexican sour cream. It's it tastes cheesy. Basically, what crema is is you take heavy cream, you either add a little lemon juice or vinegar, and you add it and you set the cream out on the counter for 24 hours at room temperature and stir it the next day and that's all that is. It's delicious, but who's got time for that? We buy it, it's great. And you can add, do add-ins in it, you could add whatever seasonings, you could do lime zest, you could do cilantro, you could add chili. Oh, so, so good. It's a great drizzle. It's a great in-between between sour cream and cheese to me. So, all right, I'm gonna take my pizza now and see if it is even slightly ready to come up. But I'm gonna cut it anyway, so. On a fathead pizza, you I usually go six slices instead of eight. And so I cut it in half and then I go into thirds, like twice on this side. Or you can just exit, you know, whatever. X and X. And you've got six slices. And that's when I started uh, making fathead pizza. On the recipe that I got off of Pinterest, it was six slices, and I've done it that way ever since. Oh, she didn't, she didn't save me some. No. <laughs> Surprisingly, <laughs> I am going to do the whole drizzle, 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 drizzle. So you just want to take a little bit on a spoon and just kind of just a little bit here and there. It'll melt down a little bit. Oh, I got a piece of meat fell off. A little dab. Out. Little dab on each slice. Yeah. This will be this will be our lunch dinner tonight. This is it. This okay. is all we'll have. Oh. Um, gotta, gotta go to work. Gotta have some off. Yeah, you're gonna need to go dish too. I don't know. And because nobody's here to mess with us, we can chalula it all we want to. We got no kids to or dad or it's too hot. Now my girls, my, my kids, mm -mm, my son, we don't get it too hot, do we, daughter? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna, I'm gonna get this under here. Slide, slide, slide. I just, I mean, mine is still very kind of hot, so. 
I mean, it's Cholula and it's dripping, but. This could have actually, I can say honestly, cooked oh, a minute. It's a little bit doughy right here in this very point, but. Hey, I get a bite of yours, you get a bite of mine. Let me show them mine too. And here you have that slice. So, this is, it got a little bit right here. It would take a little bit longer of cooking. And I think had we just baked them off like they should have been, it would have been great. So, I'm going to taste mine. Oh, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very juicy. Here we go. Mmm. Again, very flavorful, but mostly cheese to me. Very cheesy. Mm -hmm. I got nothing wrong. Guys, when I'm feel feeling lazy, I will take a pan, I will take mozzarella cheese, I'll drop it in a nonstick skillet, let it bubble, flip it, top it, and make just cheesy pizza this way. Mine is better. Yours is better? Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't even give me a bite. I guess I'll get my own. <laughs> you should know better. I don't share my food. Well, we're sharing this. We gotta share this. We can't waste not long enough. We'll All right, so I will tell you a miracle <laughs> though. Why do you like it better? Because it tastes more like an actual pizza crust versus like the fat head, which is very, very cheesy. Like, I will say that I love the crust on the fat head because I like the cheese, the cheese crust on there, but I prefer the miracle dough. Because it tastes like dough, guys. I think that's going to be it. You knew what I was going to say. It's my recipe. You know what I was going to say. But I am going to say I like them both. I love miracle dough. I'm so thankful for fat head pizza dough. It saved me when I had my first start on my keto journey. Mm. But again, if you miss the actual crust of a pizza, like the breaded part of it. This is where it went. More crema. More crema. Yeah. Oh man, it's so good you guys. It was so good. Oh. I'm supposed to be saving some of this pizza for my video taking oh baby oh, people say to me all the time can i eat a whole pizza you can try yeah you can try <laughs> when i first started keto in 2018 i started one week after her challenge which was january 1st i started january 7th and i she kept telling me that i, I wouldn't be able to eat a whole fat head pizza and she was right i was like yeah right i could eat it all mm -mm. got maybe two maybe three slices in and mind you i was making them a little bit smaller more like a 10 inch pizza but you just couldn't do it I what? might be able to with this one, though. No. We'll see. <laughs> A no. challenge accepted. She restarted her keto journey, uh, and she's doing oh, yeah. excellent. No, you did. You're doing excellent. I know. I was just thinking why I never got off of it in the first place. I don't It understand. happens. It happens to all of us, right? I went from being this to 140 pounds in four months. I went For real. from 232 pounds to 140 in less than four months. Mm -hmm. Four months. Yeah. But life happens. happens. Yeah. But hey, guess what? And, you know, menopause happened to me, and I put some more weight back Each on. Each day is And you just keep on keeping on with the keto. So I want to bring this around to you guys because, I don't know, I felt like I just slung it up on my neck. Mm. I want you to get an a, a, a inkling of the crust. Like, it's not crunchy cheese, y'all. It's so good. So, so good. Again, you can use this dough to make pizza sticks instead. You would add um, a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon. Well, I put, sometimes I take and I put a half a teaspoon of baking powder in it while I'm making it, mixing it. And that way when you roll it out, you roll it and you cut it into sticks and then bake it. And it's delicious. I've done it. I've done it. You bake them, they're excellent. And then pull them out and put a little Parmesan cheese and garlic on top. Oh my goodness, and then dip them in marinara or garlic butter, whatever you like. So when it's pizza night, you guys don't hesitate. Whether it's your your preference is fathead pizza dough or you love my miracle dough, you have the opportunity to not be deprived, to stay keto, to eat clean, and hopefully like your spouse or your kids or your grandkids or whatever, they're like, hey, this isn't bad. We can have pizza night. Watch movies. It's great. So I'm gonna check. I'm gonna take a bite. I'm like, oh, it's lunchtime. I'm still hungry. <laughs> I'm up in here. Mm -hmm. 
I just need to just wear this, okay? And then I'm going to walk up. I'm fixing the clothes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here, uh, welcome and thank you for watching. If this is not your first time here, thank you for watching. I'm showing up. Um, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Tap the notification bell if you want to get notified when I'm uploading a new video or I'm going live or I do anything on YouTube, then ding, 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 you know, you do that. Uh, thank you to my Patreons who support me and help me keep my keto journey going by keeping all of this going and developing recipes. Um, I have links for everything below. I will be adding links to Miracle Dough and um, Miracle Flour. I said Miracle Dough. The recipe and the flour itself. So leave your comments below, and if you have a question, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Y'all remember fats first, moderate protein, low carb. She's like, Yeah, get you some. <laughs> yeah. Get you some. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Thank you. I gotta hit the end button. Oh, there's the X. I always do that.